Hey guys, Sarah once again, Last in Reviews. I'm here with author Matthew Quick. Hello. <laughs> who uh, wrote Silver Linings Playbook, which is now a movie, which is getting a lot of buzz, of course, after the TIFF screening and won the award for the Audience Award and everything. <coughs> and uh, I particularly love talking to authors because I'm an avid reader myself, but it's a different perspective for you guys versus a screenwriter or a director or something because it all came from your head. Mm -hmm. And so how how has this experience been for you to see this on screen and, you know, how it translated? It's, the word I've been using a lot is, is surreal. Uh, you know, uh, when I wrote the book, I was an unpublished writer working out of my in-law's house, um, feeling very much alone and as though nobody was interested in anything that I was doing. Um, and to go from that uh, to you know seeing your book made into a movie by A-list actors and you know, one of my favorite directors was really um, even though it happened over a period of six years it was really uh, you know a lot to take in. Um, but the thing that I keep coming back to you know as an author it, it's it's really been an education for me um, to see how David works, the choices that he made, reading the screenplay. Um, was exciting for me and you know I, I had the fanboy moment um, but then I sat down and I, and I really studied it and thought about uh, how does David take my book that would be you know seven hours of reading and, and make that into a, a two-hour movie yeah. um, and I felt as though when I was reading the screenplay I was taking a master class you know um, and so I, I've tried to, to learn as much as I can um, my wife and I go to the movies every week and you know we joke and we say that's our church, but really it's it's uh, a school for us. You know, like uh, we we learn as storytellers. My wife's a writer too. Yes. Um, from watching films and reading books, and so to see someone take my source material and, and you know make this um, is it, a beautiful thing. It's an awesome thing. You know, it's really uh, springboarded my career, but it's also afforded me the ability to keep learning as a storyteller as well. So I mean, our. <coughs> Did you, when you sold the rights to your book, did you have any stipulations or anything like that? Or it was, you can have the book, you can do whatever you want with it? <laughs> um, when I got the phone call, I was at a party in, in Vermont. I was hosting a party. And of course, whenever, if you're a writer and you have a cell phone and the, when the number comes up and it's LA or, or New York, you answer. <laughs> like, you always answer. And so I saw LA and I was like, wow, because at the time I didn't know that I had a film agent. My at my agent, my literary agent in New York is Doug Stewart at Sterling Worth Literistic, and he has a partnership with Rich Green at CAA. But as a, a fresh green writer who hadn't even sold the rights yeah. to the book, I, I didn't know that my book was being shopped in LA. And so I got this call, and you know, it was, hello, this is Rich Green from CAA. I just sold your book, and it's going to be made into a movie. Uh, you know, at first I thought someone was playing a joke on me. You know, <laughs> I, I really didn't. It took a while, yeah. and then my, my literary agent was in, on the conference call, almost laughing, you know, like, I didn't want to tell you this, I want to get your hopes up. And I remember the first question I asked, you know, was, can I write a screenplay? Like, can I write a screenplay? And there was this long pause, <laughs> and uh, Rich says, uh, I think David O. Russell will write the screenplay. And of course, you know, like, to hear a name like that, yeah. um, it, it really put things into perspective for me. And uh, I tell the story all the time, I got off the phone, and... I left the house and I just walked out into the woods, you know, to kind of just process, you know, to have one of those moments that this is really real and all the work um, and all the sacrifices I had made were really starting to pay off. Um, and so that was, that was the big moment for me. And, uh, you know, so it was, it was completely mind-blowing at first. Yeah. So you didn't care, you know, you, you heard David O. Russell was going to be writing the screenplay and yeah. everything. But you didn't have any particular choices with casting or anything like that. It wasn't that I didn't care. Um, it's it's that you trusted him to. Yeah, I mean, when you hear someone like David o. Russell, it, it really put my mind at ease because I love his work. You know, I, there hasn't been a David o. Russell movie that I, I haven't enjoyed, yeah. and I, I tell this story all the time too. When I first met David, I said to him, when I, and I was writing this book, you know, and you play the fantasy of it being made into a movie. If you would ask me who should direct this, I would have said you. And you know, he, he accused me of lying, you know, it was like a funny you know, your Rich Green paid you to say that, but it was it was a funny moment for me because it was true. Um, and uh, one of the things that I think is hard for young writers to realize is that 
um, you know, there's the art that you do alone in a room, and that's art, like that's yours. Yeah. And then there's the business. And when the art leaves your, your room, your sacred space, yeah. it becomes a business and you have to act professionally. Um, and so when I realized, you know, people like Harvey Weinstein, Anthony Miguelis, and Pollock, these are people with a lot of experience that have made great films. Um, you know, I, I sort of thought I can learn a lot from them. You know, I'm not going to go in and dictate all, all of uh, these stipulations. And so I was very happy and I felt very comfortable, you know, all along. The original casting was Mark Wahlberg and and Hathaway for okay. Pat and Tiffany. And initially I was really excited about that because Mark Wahlberg has done some great stuff with David O. Russell and you know I thought he would do a really good Pat and I was really excited about Anne Hathaway because um, she did this movie called Rachel Getting Married which I thought she was brilliant in and I thought she'd be a perfect Tiffany. And then of course it all changed and then you have to get your mind readjusted to that. But when I saw the film I thought that Bradley and Tiffany were just perfect. They were yeah. so great. Yeah. Um, so what, what's your take on, you know, or do you ever see yourself being able to s be a screenwriter for your own book? Because there are some now, especially The Hunger Games, Jennifer now, um, uh, yeah. where she wrote the screenplay as well as the book. I mean, is there any, would you ever want to do that for one of your other books? Absolutely. You know, I've, I've talked about that with my agents, and, and right now they, they, you know, they're like, you know, you're Matthew Quick the novelist, we're branding you, and... <laughs> And, and I get that, you know, and it, I think it would be particularly hard to follow up David or Russell yeah. um, with the screenplay. And it's not that I don't think that I can write a quality screenplay, I think I can. Um, but I think at this point in my career, it probably behooves me to, to stick with some novels. But yeah. it's definitely something that I've always been interested in, it's something that I want to do. Um, and I hope that, you know, this experience and, you know, um, getting in with people in Hollywood will afford me that ability in the future. So you've also got some young adult books yep. out. Um, Silver Linings, I guess, wasn't really classified as a young adult book, but what do you think about the genre now? Because I read a ton of, ton of young adult books, and there are a ton of adults who do as well. Yeah, <laughs> so, mostly adults read them, <laughs> so, actually. So what's the, what do you consider the difference? Just the characters, or...? You know, when um, I had a conversation with my agent in New York, uh, after I, I had lunch with Sarah Crichton a couple of years, you know, five or six years ago, and before Silver Lines was out, and I said to Doug, what do you think I should write next? And he's like, you should write a young adult book. And my first response, you know, lingering, you know, genre snobbery and all of that, yeah. is like, I, I don't write genre, you know, like, I don't <laughs> do that. And he said to me, he's like, Matt, you know, and a total agent moment, like, calm down the author. He said, listen, you know, like, catch her in the rye, that's YA. And of course I thought, oh, I could be J.D. Salinger, like, that sounds good. <laughs> Um, but he said, you know, you have all this experience with, with teaching high school English, you know teenagers, you write in first person, you know, uh, Silver Linings is written in a very accessible voice, it would be a really natural move. And he said to me, just do exactly what you do, but set it from the point of view of a teenager. You don't have to do anything differently. Yeah. Um, and I thought, you know, at the time that really made a lot of sense to me and I started to write these characters and I didn't sit down saying, all right, let me, you know, write books for the young adult market. I just thought, let me tell my story from the point of view of a teenager and, and write about the things that I care about. And one of the great compliments that I get, and I love hearing this, is people say, you know, we don't really see a difference between your YA and adult. You know, they, they, they're all authentically Matthew Quick. Yeah. Um, and my adult fans usually enjoy the YA and vice versa. And there's a lot of great YA stuff out there. You know, um, there's a lot of brilliant writers that are are putting really good quality stuff and, and not just, you know, the fantasy stuff but the realistic YA that people don't talk about as much. There's a lot of great stuff out there and I hope that people read more of it. Do you, or are there any, um, anything in the works for any of your other books to become movies? There, um, there, there's definitely been interest. I don't know how much I can say. Okay. Um, <laughs> there, uh, there are people working on sort of like a rock star trying to get that into production. I've had some interest in Boy 21. Um, my next book that's coming out in August is a book called Forgive Me, Leonard Peacock. And it's about a teenager on his 18th birthday who takes a gun to school and um, he thinks he wants to kill his ex-best friend and himself. Um, and it takes place over the course of the day. And it's a really, for me, it's a, it's, um, 
a really important book that I, I hope will, will start a lot of good conversations, and there's been some interest in that as well. So I like the covers of that book. I saw it. Oh, it's an it's amazing cover. Yeah, um, it was funny too because uh, they asked me, "What do you want on the cover?" And I, I, there's this David. I've heard David Foster Wallace quote someone else, and he said, "The, the purpose of good literature is to comfort the disturbed and disturb the comforted." And so I wrote this book very much like I wanted it to get into the hands of, of teenage kids who were disturbed and, and, and comfort them. And I also wanted to start a conversation um, because I don't think we talk about that stuff enough. And so I'd said to Alvina Ling, my uh, editor at Little Brown, I said, let's put a gun on the cover. It's got a, it's the gun in the book is a, a P-38, it's a World War II Nazi gun. I said, let's put that on the cover. And, yeah. And she wasn't keen on that, so she came back with the, the finger pointing, yeah. and I was like, it's perfect, because it's, it's a reference to a scene in the book, too. Right. Um, and I just think it's an absolutely amazing, beautiful cover. I was so happy when I saw that. Yeah, it's really good yeah. cover. Thank you. All right, guys, uh, Matthew Quick, Silver Lines Playbook, will yeah. be out in November. And thank you, Matthew, for sitting right. down with us. Thank you. <laughs> it's a pleasure. All right. Thanks. Appreciate it.